using a Fischer esterification of P amino benzoic acid to synthesize benzocaine. Fischer esterification reactions are a type of nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions which will synthesize esters. Esters can be obtained by refluxing the parent carboxylic acid, in our case, P amino benzoic acid, with the appropriate alcohol with an acid catalyst. Today we'll be using sulfuric acid. After refluxing, the solution will be neutralized with your base, sodium bicarbonate. Since primary alcohols are more reactive than secondary alcohols, the hydrogen will add to the primary alcohol. The water will then leave because it is a good leaving group, and the carbonyl will reform. This will give you your product, benzocaine. Some important points to remember during this lab is that you must reflux the reaction for one hour. Also, the equilibrium can be driven to completion by using an excess of either the alcohol or the carboxylic acid, or by removing the water. And, alcohol has a reactivity order of methanol, primary alcohol, secondary alcohol, and tertiary alcohol due to steric effects. You want to keep this in mind during the reaction so that this will help you determine where the protons will be added. As you have seen, we've already added our 2.5 grams of P amino benzoic acid and our 20 milliliters of ethyl alcohol to our 100 milliliter round bottom flask. We have put the round bottom flask on a hot plate it is also a stir plate and added a stir bar to the solution so that it will stir continuously during the reflux. We've also already set up our condenser. Now you'll be adding 2 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid dropwise. You want to make sure that you're very careful with the sulfuric acid by wearing gloves and make sure that you're pipetting away from yourself at all times. precipitate that forms upon the addition of sulfuric acid, and this should dissolve when the solution is heated. Once the addition is complete, you will reflux with your stir bar stirring for one hour. The stirring might become difficult because of the precipitate that forms with the addition of sulfuric acid. You might need to add more ethyl alcohol to the reaction flask in order to make it easier and dissolve faster. As you can see, the reaction is starting to reflux. Make sure that your heating mantle is at about three. From this point forward, you want to reflux the reaction for one hour. refluxing for the hour, you'll remove your round bottom flask from the heating mantle and let it cool to room temperature. Then you will neutralize the solution by adding 10% sodium bicarbonate to the mixture dropwise. You want to do this very carefully. There will be gas evolution from this process, so remember to be quite cautious when adding the sodium bicarbonate. You will add enough sodium bicarbonate so that the pH of the solution is approximately 8. As you can see, when you add sodium bicarbonate, the reaction mi mixture will bubble. The pH paper will turn a greenish color when the pH is approximately 8. This means you added enough sodium bicarbonate. 
Now you extract with two 10 milliliter portions of methylene chloride. Now you'll be extracting the dichloromethane layer. If you have any questions regarding extraction, refer back to the videos involving extraction. You'll be washing with two 10 milliliter portions of methylene chloride, and then washing the combined methylene chloride layers with two 8 milliliter portions of water. During both extractions, the dichloromethane methane will form the bottom layer. So make sure that you're keeping the bottom layer. Now you'll be drying your product over sodium sulfate and a cotton plug using a gravity filter which you've used in the past. Refer back to the chromatography labs if you have any questions about this part of the procedure. Make sure you add a boiling stone to the flask so that when you put it in the rotovap, you will avoid bumping. You want to have had your, your flask weighed out before you add your product. As you can see, the solution that comes through the filter is clear. If you get a cloudy solution, you'll have to redo this. You'll be using the rotary vap if you cannot remember, first you'll be turning on the vacuum. Then you'll be closing the vent and lowering it into the water. Then you will turn on the spin. And you will also turn on the heat to about 30 to 35 degrees Celsius. Make sure that the water is also turned on. You'll be recrystallizing the whitish residue that you get from after rotovapping it in ethanol, ethyl alcohol and water. If you have any questions regarding your crystallization, refer back to the videos on your crystallization. Once that is complete, you'll be needing to do a suction or vacuum filtration with this setup here. You will get whitish crystals as your product. Make sure that you weigh your crystals and take a melting point. 